Medtronic Technologies impacted more than 72 million people in the last year, equating to two people every second. Harnessing the power of technology to take healthcare further, each technology has unique benefits designed to serve patients. The goal of this program is to get closer to the patient and to delve into the challenges and impact each technology has in practice. This is the Medtronic MedEd learning experience. The BIS monitoring system should not be used as the sole basis for diagnosis or therapy and is intended only as an adjunct in patient assessment. Reliance on BIS system alone for intraoperative anesthetic management is not recommended. Medtronic's medical education programs are offered to provide attendees education on the FDA cleared indications and use of our products when applicable. The contents and conclusions of the following program are solely those of the speakers unless otherwise cited. The speakers are responsible for all content and any necessary permissions. The speakers received funding from Covidian LP, a Medtronic company, for the speaking engagement. For this segment of the series, a discussion on anesthesia and the brain, we will discuss if processed EEG can help us understand how EEG affects patients differently. To help provide insight into this topic is Dr. Bob Thiele, Assistant Professor and Co-Director Enhanced Recovery After Surgery Program at the University of Virginia. This is a really interesting study looking at the impact of general anesthesia on EEG waveforms based on your age. And so on the left, we have patients that are anesthetized with propofol, and the right, we have C of Florin. And what's fascinating about this is that the younger patients, so 30 or younger, develop very, very prominent alpha wave activity under general anesthesia, whether it's propofol or stevoflurane. You see that, again, around 10 to 15 hertz on both compressed spectral arrays. By the time you turn about 65 or 70, a lot of that alpha activity goes away. So these EEG waveforms do not respond the same way. So the point here is that individuals actually, res their brains respond differently to general anesthesia depending on how old they are. And that kind of makes intuitive sense if you think about just sleep. Humans respond differently to sleep depending on how old they are. I have a six-year-old and if she's asleep, I can pick her up and move her and she won't wake up. Um, but assuming you could actually pick me up, you could never do that with me. And if you bump into my wife when she's sleeping, um, she'll wake up and it'll have a hard time flying back asleep. And that's not atypical. Anyway, if you're interested in reading more about this type of work, in addition to Ira Rample's paper in 1998, there's an entire issue in British Journal of Anesthesia in 2015 that's really focused on processed EEG and the effect of anesthesia on, on EEG and, and how that relates to intraoperative awareness. Please tune in next week for a new segment from this series wherever you find your podcast. This is the Medtronic MedEd Learning Experience. Thank you for listening.